Hello, YouTube. Hey, thanks for tuning in. This is part two of my three part series on Blue Iris and DeepStack with Home Assistant. If you missed part one, go ahead and pause the video now and watch that. I'll throw a link down in the description. For those of you that already watched part one, a quick recap. In that video, we downloaded and installed Blue Iris, DeepStack GPU for Windows, CUDNN, and the CUDA Toolkit. Then we did some basic configuration, like setting where the footage will be stored, configured Blue Iris and DeepStack to automatically start when the system boots, and some other basic stuff. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to add a camera to Blue Iris and how to configure object detection for that camera using DeepStack. Hi, my name is Jeff, welcome to the channel. I cover all sorts of smart home nerd stuff here. I'm just your average professional IT nerd. With over 25 years in the industry, I've learned a bit along the way about programming, networking, and all sorts of other crazy stuff that most people don't find interesting. My goal with this channel is to take that knowledge and apply it to smart home tech to make the complicated stuff less complicated so that everyone can have a smart house the easy way. I invite you to come with me on my journey to discover all the crazy stuff along the way as I make the dumb stuff smart and the smart stuff easy. Blue Iris and DeepStack need no introduction at this point since we already spent an entire video talking about them. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? Now, some of the stuff I'm gonna to touch on in this video is gonna be different depending on your camera in terms of what setting is where and even what settings are available. Because of that, I'm not gonna go into a great deal of detail about the precise locations of anything or even super exact configuration settings. There are plenty of other YouTube videos out there of guys configuring various types of cameras and the exact settings that should be configured on each make and model of camera so that they work best with Blue Iris. This stuff varies based on whether or not the camera is RTSP or RTSPS, if it has adjustable keyframes, all sorts of stuff. In this video, I'm gonna give you the settings that you want to configure and the way that you want to configure them, but it will be up to you to find the exact location of those settings for your specific brand and model and to make those changes. Before adding your camera, you'll want to make sure that substreams are enabled. You should also disable any watermarks or overlays on the image at the camera level, since we'll handle all that within Blue Iris. I mean, really, why do you need to know if the camera footage you're watching is from a Ubiquiti camera or an Amcrest camera or stupid camera manufacturers? Lastly, if your camera has the ability to adjust the iframe or frame interval, you wanna set that to match the frame rate of the camera. For example, if your camera records 15 frames per second, then the iframe should also be set to 15. Some cameras, such as the Amcrest cameras that I'm using, allow for setting this. Others, such as my Ubiquiti cameras, do not. If you can't adjust it, don't worry, they'll still work. This is just an additional optimization that should be done if you're able to. Finally, disable any AI processing on your camera, such as motion detection or object identification. There's no reason to burden the camera with performing that processing when we're gonna leverage DeepStack to do that for us. Once you've got the camera itself configured the way that you want it, launch Blue Iris and right-click anywhere in the large right-hand panel. Select Add New Camera. In the Full Name field, give your camera a name. In the Short Name field, enter a name in all lowercase with no spaces and keep in mind that all camera names must be unique. Leave Network IP selected and under Options, check the box for direct to disk recording, then click OK. On the Network IP Camera Configuration page, enter the IP address for your camera, enter the username and the password, and click Find Inspect. Blue Iris does a pretty good job of finding cameras and getting the settings from them. If for whatever reason, Blue Iris does not find the settings for your camera, you can try to select the make and model from the dropdown list. If your camera make and model are not found on the list and Blue Iris doesn't discover it, Check the camera manufacturer's documentation or check one of the many IP camera forums such as the Blue Iris forums or IP Cam Talk. Once your camera has been detected or once you've chosen it from the dropdown list, make sure to select a substream and then click OK. Then on the video tab, make sure hardware decode is set to default since we already configured that globally in the first video. Adjust the max rate higher if necessary to match your camera's frame rate. Click Edit Overlays. I like to put the camera name in the lower left and the date and time in the lower right, and I also like to check the box for Display Overlays Live. Feel free to add whatever overlay information you'd like. 
On the audio tab, if your camera supports audio, check the box for enable audio channel. For my cameras that support audio, the default settings all seem to work just fine. On the trigger tab, ensure that motion sensor is checked, then click configure. These settings you'll need to test and tweak a little bit depending on your camera resolution, as well as the normal lighting of the scene that your camera is capturing. I start with a minimum object size of 200 and a minimum contrast of 20. Set the make time to 0.2 seconds. Make sure the object detection button is checked, then click edit. On this page, I select object travels and set the value to 100 pixels on substream. The rest of the settings here can be seen in the image. Once you're all set there, click OK to return to the trigger tab. Select high res JPEG files from the add to alerts list dropdown. Then click artificial intelligence. Select deep stack and then set your minimum confidence and number of real time images. Now I set mine to 60% and 10 images and I want one image analyzed each 50 milliseconds. I've seen many other configs where only four or five images are analyzed at a much longer interval, such as 100 or even 250 milliseconds, but I want these to process as fast as possible. One image every 50 milliseconds for 10 images is a half a second, versus one image every 250 milliseconds for only four images is a full second. Since my system has horsepower to spare, I intend to use it. Feel free to adjust any of these settings to meet your performance needs. In addition, if you find you're getting too many false positives, go ahead and crank up the minimum confidence. On the other hand, if you aren't getting enough detections, crank it down a bit. The rest of my settings can be seen in the image here. The only other one to mention is the Save Unknown Faces to, and you can see I've selected AUX1. AUX1 is a storage location defined in the main blue iris config, which we went through in the previous video. I have this configured to gather photos of faces from my cameras, so that I can build a library to use to train DeepStack facial recognition. But as I mentioned in the previous video, I don't have all that sorted out just yet, and I'm not even completely convinced of its viability. So rather than provide half-baked info, I'm just gonna skip over that for now. If and when I do get it all sorted and I have it working well, don't worry, there'll be a video all about it at that time. Once you've got everything set on the AI page, click OK to return to the trigger page. On the record tab, I set my camera to record continuous plus alerts since I'm using DeepStack. This setting will continuously record just the substream and then when DeepStack identifies an object and raises an alert, Blue Iris will record the main high res stream. Set the pre-trigger record time to five seconds and set the combine or cut video each one hour. There you go. Now you've got a camera added to Blue Iris and you've got DeepStack configured to recognize objects. When DeepStack recognizes an object, it will show up in the left panel under alerts with a screenshot of the object, what type of object it identified, as well as the percentage of confidence in that identification. Last, spend some time getting to know the status page. You can get there by clicking the icon at the top left next to the question mark. It looks like an arrow trending up on a graph. The log page will show you dates and times for various events, including motion events and object identifications, along with how long it took DeepStack to make that identification. The cameras tab will show you information about your cameras, such as frames per second versus keyframe. Ideally, you wanna see one or as close to it as possible for the key value. It will show you the bit rate for both the mainstream and the substream, the number of motion events, the number of triggers, and then the number of alerts. You can also see the number of times a camera lost signal. This is really useful for troubleshooting Wi-Fi cameras. The storage tab will display information about the amount of storage consumed by Blue Iris. On the AI tab, you can get a bunch more information about what DeepStack thinks about the images that it's analyzing. To view this analysis, just drag any one of the .dat files from your alerts directory and drop it onto this tab to see the entire image analysis as shown on the screenshot. Did you guys catch all that? I feel like I went through it pretty quick, but hey, there's always pause and rewind, right? Let me know in the comments if you've been able to follow along so far and get this set up. I'm also really interested to hear what types of cameras people are using, and more importantly, if you're happy with them. Give us the good, the bad, and the ugly so that anybody else that's shopping for cameras knows what to look for, and just as importantly, what to stay away from. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss part three of the series where I configure the Blue Iris integration for Home Assistant and configure notifications from Blue Iris so that you can take actions in Home Assistant based on those notifications. If you'd like to support the channel as well as receive exclusive benefits 
such as periodic copies of my automations, dashboard, and configuration YAML files, early access to ad-free videos, access to the FHD Discord channel, free t-shirts, exclusive giveaways, and more, please consider becoming a patron over on patreon.com. I'll leave a link in the description in case you're interested. I'd like to extend a big thank you to my current patrons for your support. You guys rock. I hope that everyone enjoyed today's video. If you did, please go ahead and whack that like button for me to tell the YouTube algorithm that this video didn't suck and that more people should watch it. I hope you found today's video informative and entertaining. I hope that I was able to teach you something. I hope you liked today's t-shirt, link in the description, and I hope to see all of your smiling faces again for part three of this exciting series. Thanks for watching, and until next time, go automate something, will ya?